Y'all probably say, where exactly are you going with this? I see you really trying to take it there. Old school flow, chew you out. Ain't fair, Jordan Pen. You might want to let the audience know who you are and, you know, basically, and you can take it from there. They see, wrong is strong. I mean, born and raised in Chicago. I live out here in Phoenix now. Okay. So, I mean, a lot of people I'm sure have already not got the full story, but basically got a general idea of who you are. But I'm like people from my audience, uh, I would like you to give them an idea of who you are. Basically, just, you know, run through, you know, how what made you, you know what I mean? Like, everything that you've pretty much been through. I mean, I, I was born and raised in Chicago, man, and um, uh, pretty fucked up childhood, you know. Um, went through through a lot of shit. Some of my people have watched my channel. Um, you know, a lot of trauma as a kid. Um, you know, molestation, uh, uh, a lot of bad shit, man, you know, so grew up with a, a, a big chip on my shoulder. And uh, by the time that my uh, grand, grandparents tried to step in and kind of like pull me out of the, that street mentality life, um, it was a, it was a little bit too late already. You know, I was already, um, you know, in love with the host with the whole life. And, uh, you know, I started, uh, selling, you know, a little weed here and there as a, a very young age. And I uh, fell in love with making money. So, you know, I looked up to, you know, the gangsters in the neighborhood, you know, the drug dealers, the pimps. And um, I thought that, you know, that's what I, I wanted to be when I grew up. I thought that, um, you know, that uh, that's what my uh, calling was. And, um, I just had life twisted, man, you know, and, and um, I started uh, committing a lot of crimes and, and uh, just moved up the ladder really fast, too fast. You know, um, if a lot of people don't know, but um, so I, I grew up in one of the biggest Latin King neighborhoods in Chicago. It's 26th Street, La Villita, where uh, Cato and the Flores Brothers are from. And, um, you know, I was friends with them. They were my friends as, as, you know, childhood, as I grew up when I went to McCormick Branch, you know, school out there. And um, when my grandparents stepped in to move me out, they moved me to a different neighborhood that's a different gang, the same disciples, the SDs, me and you were talking about it, you know, earlier. And um, I, I wanted to be part of something so bad that, you know, I got there and they started showing me love and, um, you know, I ended up turning a Saint Disciple. I ended up turning an SD and, you know, I started banging hard and, um, I was just lost, man, looking for a family, looking for, you know, uh, a group of individuals that were going to show me love and, and, you know, care like a family does. And, you know, I started catching cases, you know, I started with little, little stuff, you know, and, you know, my first my first big case was a gun a gun case. It was a unlawful use of a weapon. I got into a shootout, and the cops were literally down down the block. And all I remember is just the motor. You know how the car sounds of a cop when they hit the gas. You know, you hear them coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, they caught me. You know, and caught my first case, a gun case, and. Uh, I was pretty young. I was barely turning 17, but there was, it's when they, uh, they were already charging everybody as adults. They had changed, just changed the law. And um, I ended up getting probation for it. So, you know, um, it was like a slap on the wrist. So to me, that made me like, I mean, a couple of days later, I was already packing again. So like, it didn't help me learn my lesson, you know? So ended up catching another gun case and you know, uh, went to that uh, 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 drug, uh, they have like a gang program in Chicago where uh, you could do six months, uh, up to seven years, they reduce six, They reduce it to six months mm -hmm. if you pass the program. It's a military like based program. And it's ran by a bunch of fucking like redneck fucking CEOs. It's at the bottom of Illinois and like, 
you get there and they tell you to start fucking. They made a movie on it. The uh, first time felon. I made a see it. So uh, yeah, that's 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 that program is real. It's true. And um, got there, you know, got out, met a lot of fuck. I mean, it was ridiculous. As soon as I got off the bus, there was like rooms, uh, and I always remember because it looked like a scene from Colors when they go into the jail cell and they got the bloods in the cribs and everybody's yeah. like on different sides. And it was just like that, man, because I walked in and everybody was gangbanging. Like, man, there was dragons, there was cobras, counts, bishops. And I was like, man, how the fuck am I supposed to change here with all this fucking gangbanging, man? You know, so I always wanted to change, man, even as a kid, man. I wanted to change. I just didn't know how to. And I, I didn't have the resources or the like the support that I needed in order for me to change. Because I, I, I would I would get little jobs when I would get out, you know, and 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 do good. I've always done good in everything I do. Like my jobs, I was I would always move up and be like a manager, even at a really young age. But I would fall back into the streets again because it, it's easier to do to do bad, it's easier. Exactly. You know, it's really, really hard to walk that, that straight path, man. And people don't realize that, you know. For instance, this time that I came home, man, you know, I had to walk to work for like a year and a half and I had to get up at three in the morning because the buses don't run early here in Phoenix. So, you know, I had to walk for a whole hour just to get to work to train my first client. And in the back of my head, I'm always fighting the whole idea of um, the big people that I know in Mexico where one little move could get me that brand new truck that I need so I don't have to walk. <laughs> or, or, you know, that one move where I can slap a down payment, a big down payment on a house and just pay the mortgage after that. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's hard, man, especially when you've had it before. You've had it before, you've had it in your hands, so you know it's, it's actually doable and possible. You know, you know I always tell, they always ask me, like, what's, what's the most you ever had put away? And honestly, the most I ever had put away was half a mil in my closet and Nike boxes. So, like... You know, my wife was like buying four thousand dollars sheets for the bed, and I I remember I was like, "Why the fuck you buy four thousand dollars fucking sheets for?" And then I laid on them, and I was like, "Oh, this is why. <laughs> That's how it feels. That's how four G's feels on a bed." <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you know, um, the hardest, the hardest. The hardest change for me has been to humble myself. The hardest change has been for me, um, like I told you, some youngster bumped into me at the gas station. I even apologized, and he kept on going, man. And and like, like, dude, like, I, I don't want no problems, man. Like, I'm I'm done. I'm done trying to be a tough guy. Like, and and, and I should have listened to my grandfather years ago. You know, he used to always tell me. The, the real gangsters, the one that gets up to work every day and takes care of his fucking family. He went to work for 63 years, never missed a day of work, man. Never called in sick, never nothing. No matter how hungover he was, no matter how much he drank, he always showed up to work. So that's a real fucking gangster, man. Not the motherfuckers on the street on the corner, man. Fighting for a color that's not yours, a block that's not yours. And at the end of the day, the feds just fucking lock you up and slam you over, hit you over the head with fucking 10, 15, 20 years. You know, so, I mean, it, it's been a struggle, brother. The change has been a struggle. Um, uh, being tested by, you know, fools. And, and, and I do actually pretty good. I was actually kind of mad at myself today for kind of like letting myself uh, uh, let fucking fall off the fucking edge. I even called my boy West, uh, that uh, that white dude from uh, San Diego. Yeah. Been all over the social media and everything. Uh, I called him and I'm like, dude, man, speak, 
speak some knowledge to me, man, because I'm about to fucking jump in my car and go to Cali, man. <laughs> it's, hey, not to cut you off, but it's like that. It's like, it's like you notice, like I was telling you, like some of these dudes, they're they're in California. We've been trained a certain way, so when we hear keywords, a lot of the, the ones that are not really, not necessarily inmates. I mean, like convicts. The convicts, you know, everything is paperwork. You know, like the real ones, it's paperwork. Hearsay means absolutely nothing. But, yeah, some, yeah. you know, go ahead. But, okay, so what I was saying is, like, sometimes people are not well-trained, so they jump to conclusions. So, our, like, when I talk to you, I already knew basically where you were coming from. I knew exactly what you were trying to convey. It's just... Sometimes people think with simpler minds, so they're unable to understand exactly what people go through in order to get to that point. And they just didn't really pay attention. And I wanted yeah. you to, uh, you know, to touch on that, you know what I mean? Because, you know. So when we, uh, my last time that I did time before I got violated, because this is the case that I caught in 2007, um, I went to the feds and that was pretty much my breaking point where I, I said, I'm done. Um, I'm done being, trying to, I remember my grandfather wrote me a letter and he told me, you are by far the worst fucking drug dealer I know because you always get caught. <laughs> so, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> so you know, I was like, you know, fuck, you know, and I, I was, I was actually set up by, by my brother-in-law. He was dating my sister. So I trusted the dude. So, but sometimes in that game, you just can't trust nobody. Not sometimes, all the time. Yeah. So, you know, I ended up going to the feds and, and um, I got accepted to the drug program because they screen you now back then. They screened you a lot more because everybody was trying to get in there because you were getting four years off your shit. Two years halfway house, two years good time. Everybody wanted those fucking four years. You know, there was a bunch of homies there from Cali. They were all waiting in line to get in. We do that out here too. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they dropped it down now. I think now you only get a year because last time I was in Lompoc, that's what they were saying. But, they screened you. They, you know, if you were really a drug addict, there was questions that they asked you, you know, that only drug addicts would fucking, you know, know. And I mean, I, I'm, I'm a fucking drug addict, man. I, I, I use drugs my whole life to try and forget my demons. And, you know, um, I went through the screen, I got accepted and they sent me to uh, sweet Mariana. I mean, in Florida, good weather, fucking uh, grass, trees, you know what I mean? It was, it's a medium. It's a medium. It's still popping a little bit, but it's a sweet place. There's a lot of education programs, a lot of church. There's a lot of self-development things there, you know? And, and when people, when I tell people that, they don't understand that sometimes you hit yards and there ain't shit on, in there that to do something with your time. Like uh, Victorville. Victorville is just a fucking cemetery dirt zone that just you know breeds killing because there's nothing to fucking do besides trying to stay alive and kill motherfuckers they ain't no school they ain't shit you're always on lockdown you know what i mean so there's joints that actually offer you a a, a gateway like something to to do for you with your time and mariana was that you know and I got there, and I remember, man. I was I was in transfer, and I got I got to uh, Atlanta, and you know the the guards were like, "Man, you're going to a sweet place, blah blah blah." And I'm like, "For real?" And they got me all hyped up. I was like, "Fucking ready, ready to get there." And I was, shit, you know, I got there, and it looked like a cat, like like a college dorm. So I was like, "Fuck yeah, this is a fucking sweet place, man." And I was like, "Man, please, Lord." Let there be no land kings here. Like, let me do my time in peace. Let me, let me just, you know, do this program, get out and, and change my life. If you give me one more chance, 
I swear to God, I won't let you down. Just that one more chance. I know you've given me like 30, but give me one more. You know, and I walked in. Man, there was like 63 kings there, man. They were deep, too. And there was a bunch of bloods because we ride with the bloods. So, you know, I get there. And that they already knew that I was coming because one of the guys that worked, you know, um, when you're coming in, what is that called? Uh, rece receiving. Yeah. One of the guys that worked receiving, he was he was a blood. So he went and told all the brothers, "Hey man, you guys got you guys got a fucking little soul ass little Mexican coming in, blah blah blah." <laughs> and as soon as I got out, they all came out. You know, some of them knew my brother, so they knew what's up. They were what's up with me, and. They gave me my big ass care package, Air Force Ones, you know, my jogging pants, food, you know, a little, little of this, a little of that. And, and, you know, I was like, I almost felt guilty to grab it because in my head, I was already like checked out. Like I didn't, I didn't want to be part of it no more. You know what I mean? So I was like, fuck, man. But I, I was like, fuck you, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and write it out. So got my shit. Went to my unit. As soon as we got there, the next day they start briefing us. If we see you guys handshaking, if we see you guys in the yard with your gang, anything, and it's it's fucked up, dog, because they say they almost set you for failure because they have this dorm and everybody's living there to do the drug program, and then they have a no a dorm next to it with all the fucking child molesters. Cause that's a program there for them too, yeah. and then they got three dorms of people doing a shitload of fucking time. So it's it's almost like a like I call it the Twilight Zone. Kids twenty two. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it was crazy because I seen a lot of my dudes that were doing the drug program with me. That last minute, one of my dudes, he was I don't want to say his name, but he was from Florida. He was about to finish that week, and one of the child molesters was, like, showing pictures to the other one, and he just told me, he's like, Jay, I can't, bro. I just can't, bro. I can't do this no more. And I was like, dude, we're almost done, man. I, I still had a month left, but he was leaving that week. He's like, I can't, dude. He's like, be a, be a G, man. Walk out, please. I don't, I don't want to pull you down with me. And I still give him mad love for that, man. You know what I mean? He 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 wanted to take care of his business. I walked out, and he took care of his business, man. I mean, he had to do what he wanted to do, you know. So, you know, he he ended up getting uh, more time, and he got shipped to uh, the USP Coleman. So, you know, it, it's it was it was a crazy, crazy, crazy little you know years that I was there. But uh, getting back to the story, you know. Um, Little by little, as I started doing the program and I actually started doing the work, you know, they have, they have, a, like, counseling. They have um, all these, uh, like, homework that you do. Is check the camera. Things that you don't see because you're so trapped in that mentality of your ego and people testing you that they have this exercise that they call check the camera where you're in line and somebody comes in front of you and you're like, oh, this motherfucker, you know, cut in front of me, punk ass bitch, he thinks I'm a bitch and you want to take care of business. But in all reality, that dude didn't see you there. He wasn't even paying attention. So they call that check the camera. Mm -hmm. And there was exercises like that that we started doing that honestly, dude, I was so lost in my mentality of the streets that I mean, you know it, man. What's 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 a couple of words that flare us up in the joint? Punk, bitch. Yep. If you say bitch, we about to fight. Oh, it's going down. It's going down. <laughs> Boy, you're from your kick off too. <laughs> so it's like we're so trapped in that mentality that, like, it almost sets up it, it sets us up for failure. And what this program started to do for me, it actually started opening my eyes that. I had been taught the wrong way my whole life, how to think, how to react, everything. You don't fucking solve everything by shooting somebody, man. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not about, <laughs> it's not about who has the bigger dick. 
you know, and it's crazy because, you know, um, the more I, the more I studied and the more, you know, I started getting into it, the more I became hungry for more knowledge. You know, I started learning how to read better. I started getting into like novels, you know, uh, reading books. And, and then I went to go get my GD and I passed that motherfucker. And I was, I was happy as fuck, man. I was like, man, I ain't that fucking dumb. You know, because for a long time, I, I didn't, I still can't write for shit. You know that. I've been texting you all fucking day. I can't write for shit. But uh, I can read. I got, uh, my reading and comprehension is at a second uh, uh, year of college. My writing skills are like third, fourth grade. But it's just because I, I focus so much on reading. But, you know, I started going to school. I started getting in the computer lab. I learned how to type. And I'm going to do a video, man. I got about 25 certificates in there. You know, from every every class they could offer in there, I took it. And, you know, it got to the point where, you know, the kings always wanted me out in the yard. They always wanted me to pray on this day, do this, do that. And, um, you know, uh, I handled business one time there, and I was lucky enough to get away with it. You know, one of our brothers came in, and um, he wasn't – he was dirty. So – I mean, you know, you have 90 days to produce your paperwork. Yeah. If you don't produce your paperwork, you got to lock up. When you get your paperwork, you can come back out. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, we ended up finding out the hard way, and we had to get them out. And I did what I had to do, and I was lucky enough that, you know, I, I, I nothing happened. You know, I went to my locker, packed all my shit up. And I was pretty much, you know, saying deuces, you know, there goes my program, there goes everything. And that made me just realize that a lot of these dudes that have a lot of time should be handling that business, not the dudes that are trying to get out, not the dudes that are going home already. You know what I mean? So I started to, I was like, man, fuck this, man. I'm not going to get manipulated by nobody no more. I'm not going to be used. Fuck that. So, you know. I, I, I called the meeting, I sat down with all the brothers, and um, I pretty much told them, yo, you know what, I'm sitting it down, I'm done, um, I, I don't have time for this bullshit no more, I want to finish the drug program, I want to get better, I want to change my life, and, um, you know, the guy that had the yards really didn't like me, he, he didn't like me, um, he had been down since the 80s, and he had a, a big chip on his shoulder, and, um, you know, uh, uh, he didn't like me because a lot of the kings would follow me all the time wherever I went. If I was in the in the library, they would be over there. I, I have a, a natural gift. I, I got charisma, man. So, like, they would follow me around, work out with me and stuff like that. And, you know, um, he was like, nah, you, you ain't sitting down. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, you know, I, 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 I don't want to do this no more, man. And and if you were my true brother, you would understand that. And he's like, nah, you ain't sitting it down. So I was like, you know what? I got pissed, man. I got like lit up. Like I was about to like kick shit off right there with myself. And I got up and I was like, you know what, dude? I'm done, man. I ain't doing this shit no more. I ain't fucking being your guinea pig no more. I'm going to finish that drug problem and I'm going to go fucking home to my family. And I was like, I'm done. And he got up. He's like, there's going to be consequences. And I was like, what? That I'm going to sit by myself? Or that you're going to try and send somebody, try and beat me up, and I ain't going to have no backup? I was like, don't worry, dude. I can take care of myself, man. So I got up and I left. Went to my cell. I'm not going to lie. You know, I was, I was scared. I ain't going to sit here. A lot, of, a lot of motherfuckers talk about all their war stories and everything, but they don't tell the truth of how they really feel. I keep it real, man. I'm transparent. I don't give a fuck. I was scared. I knew they were coming. So, you know, that day I was like, you know, should I take my knife with me or should I leave it here? Because I was going to work. So I ended up taking my knife with me, went to work. And the whole time I was just on edge. You know, I was, I was working, cooking, and, you know, just fucking. Everybody knew something was wrong with me because I was just fucking quiet. I'm never fucking quiet. And um, one of the vice lords ran up to me and he's like, yo, they got your, you got, they got your boys. And I was like, whoo, what are you talking about? And I ran out to the window 
because when you're you're cooking, they have you locked in the kitchen, you know, in the yard, you know, yeah. out for those that never been to fucking prison. Um, they were escorting them out, and they they escorted like close to like I want to say eighteen or nineteen. There was a lot of them. They had a, a case on them where they were sneaking phones in, and the guard got caught. So they had like build a case against them and like pull them all out that night. That's why I said like. God gave me that sign that day that he was giving me a fucking second chance. So that day I got up in the morning and I was like, you know, got on my knees and I was like, fucking thank you. I don't wish bad on nobody, dude. Nobody. You know, if you're man enough to do whatever it is, then, you know, take your time, do it, whatever. You know what I mean? So I don't wish bad on nobody. So I, I don't want nobody to think that I was wishing bad on, on them. No, nothing. They were all my brothers. I still loved them. It didn't matter. But I went to the yard. The kings that were left there all came out. And they're like, yo, JC, man, we, we, want you, we want you to have the keys to the yard. You know, we like how you carry yourself. We see how. Because honestly, dude, everybody in that yard respected me. The woods, the Florida car, the bloods, the crib. Everybody respected me because of the way that I carried myself. And uh, a lot of my boys used to make fun of me because they used to say that all I needed to do was kiss babies because I would go to every single man, shake his hand like a man, and show respect. And, you know, I carry myself like that. Um, so I was like, nah, man, I, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't doing no gang activity. I ain't getting the keys. I ain't running shit. If you guys want to hang out with me and go do positive shit, go to the school with me, go fucking learn a trade, go to church. Because I, I had just signed up to be a personal trainer. So mm -hmm. I was going to school to learn how to do that shit in there. So, you know, um, yeah, they followed suit, man. They started hanging out with me. And what's crazy, dog, is that the whole prison noticed how positive I was. Um, and the, the, the main lady that used to run the school district, um, when she seen that I passed and I got my certificate and everything, they asked me, hey, would you be, you know, would you do a, a fitness class at the gym yard? And I was like, yeah, I'm fucking down. They're like, we'll pay you. And she's like, we'll pay you 40 bucks a month. I was like, shit, man, 40 bucks in jail a month? That's balling status. Like, you know? So I was like, let's do this. So um, after that, they offered me another job doing the personal training class. And they gave me a classroom and everything. Dude. I mean, I, I felt special, man. And uh, a lot of the homies were signing up. There was a lot of MS-13s there. Um, <laughs> A lot of Sudanios, they were all signing up, man. But it was because they were seeing the, the positivity of what I was, my message. So, you know, um, I just started, I started doing it, man. I started doing it, boom, 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 planning my shit out. You know, um, the day that I left, man, was very, very emotional for me because every single car in that prison cooked me a meal. Every single fucking car, you know, the, the Southsiders in my unit, the Bloods, the Cribs, everybody made me a bow that whole week. And it was a lot of love, man. So it was a very emotional day, the day that I left. I came.